Well, hello again. I want to welcome you back to Cooking with Phil Darst. I'm Phil Darst, and I'm glad to have you here. If this is your first time, I'm glad you found us today. And if you're one of the faithful that keeps coming back, we sure appreciate you. Got something a little different again today. You notice I got the long sleeve shirt on. It's a little cool for us down here in Florida. It's uh, high 50s, I guess. So I thought we'd have some hearty soup. Now, I've got a cauliflower broccoli soup recipe that is pretty good if I've had a crowd. But today, I don't have a crowd, so I didn't want to get a whole head of cauliflower and a couple heads of broccoli because I had spoiled before I got done eating it myself. So I, I've got a package of uh, broccoli and cauliflower with a little bit of carrots in it, which I normally put in the soup anyway. So we're going to have that, and I'm going to show you how to fix it up in a few minutes. I'll take you over here and show you all the ingredients that are going to go into it, make it a little bit more flavorful. I'm sure glad that you're here, and I'll be over and show you what's going into it in just a couple minutes. So thanks for coming today. Goodbye. Okay, we're over here at the grocery list now, going through what we're going to put in our soup. And uh, first step is, this is California blend. Some stores call it California mix. It's got the broccoli, the cauliflower, and some carrots in it. So we've got our vegetables here. Uh, and then, usually we put some onion and about everything I cook, so I'm going to use about half of this nice little Spanish onion. And the other thing that I found is usually good, sweetens it up a little bit, gives it a little nice texture and color, is uh, red bell pepper. We'll probably use half of that. And of course, always, you got to have a little garlic, I think. Now, not everybody wants garlic, but you can use two, you can use four. I'm going to put three in here. And now we'll get into the seasonings. I just bought some good old uh, rosemary the other day. So this is out of my little uh, garden plot that I got out here. So we'll put some fresh rosemary. And some that I don't use too often, that's why it's in this little scrunched up bag, is uh, this is celery seed. But we'll put a little more in a pinch of that in there. It gives it just a little... Uh, flavor that you don't get any other way and then along with the rosemary why one of my favorites uh, is thyme so this is uh, some uh, thyme leaves and uh, just a dash of nutmeg that'll give it a little different kick I believe that's an East Indian ground nutmeg uh, from McCormick and uh, to heat it up just a little bit is cayenne pepper. Now we could put jalapeno, we could put some serrano, but in this case a few shakes of the cayenne pepper I think is going to give it enough heat. Now, to cream it up a little bit, we've got some sour cream. And uh, that is something that I think it gives it a little extra kick here, a little flavor. And then we'll put in some... Uh, coconut milk. We could use regular milk, we could use cream, but coconut milk to me gives it a flavor that you don't get any other way. And then uh, the bouillon. Now we could use chicken bouillon. Here is seasoned mushroom bouillon. This is better than bouillon. You can find that at most stores. It's mushroom flavor. And to go along with that, uh, because we like mushrooms, uh, you'll find them in a lot of my dishes. It's uh, cream of mushroom soup that we're, we're going to add. And now we'll get to the mushrooms. Now, years and years and years ago, I was taught to put the mushrooms in a, in a paper bag and you put them in the refrigerator and that way the air flows through the uh, pores of the bag and your mushrooms don't get slimy. Well, that's a good idea. I've done that. But just recently, I have done some reading and I found out that if you put the mushrooms in a paper towel and then put them in the bag, that 
it, it helps a little bit more and they don't get slimy and I'm going to test that so I don't think I'll do it any other way now because that seems to make a difference in how the mushrooms how fresh they stay I use them maybe every couple of days but still uh, if I buy eight ounces or so and uh, I can stick them in there now here the other day I had eight ounces I used four I had four left and they were nice I did clean them up you'll see so if anybody needs to know they've already been clean most of the mud's off of them so we're going to put the mushrooms in and the last thing is cheese now you can use a lot of different kinds of cheese uh, Monterey Jack and cheddar are good cheeses together this is Mexican cheese and the reason I'm liking it is because it has a queso quesadilla cheese in it and the asadero. Now that's D with a D in, like in Darst, asadero, not asiego cheese. And we're going to put that in there to give it that nice creamy uh, cheese flavor. And also it's going to add some protein in it. So in a few minutes, I'm going to take all these over to the stove and put them in there after I've chopped them up. You're not going to have to endure all that chopping, but I think that we'll get it all cut up and I'll put the spices in and then down below you'll see the ingredients and the quantities that we use if you want to make this and I suggest you do because it's uh, a good soup. It's a staple around here. So I'll see you over at the stove in just a few minutes with the ingredients. Okay, the cooking's beginning now. I've got uh, a couple pats of butter in here and I'm warming that up because I'm going to make a roux in just a second. I have here two tablespoonfuls of flour and what I like to do is kind of sift the flour so that there's no lumps or even bugs in there and uh, we're going to sift that down a little bit and let that brown. Now I like to let the root kind of get brown and cook the flour taste out of it. So that's going to take a minute or two and I'm going to start adding vegetables and things into this in just a few minutes. I guess there's not too much in there we don't want. Sometimes I find some pretty good sized chunks or lumps that I don't like those because again we don't want to taste the flour we just want it to work with the roux and we got some fat in there which is good see that's the stuff we didn't want in there okay get that out now I'm going to stir this up and as you see it's getting a little bit brown I'm going to turn it back a little bit so that I don't burn it and uh, the next step is I'm going to put onions now that's half of that onion that you saw it's all diced up chopped and uh, I'm going to let that kind of work for a few minutes before I put much else in there. And let that just kind of sweat as they say. And in order to do that, we'll dump a little bit of salt in there. That's good old sea salt. And then I'm going to shut the camera off a few minutes while that's working so that you don't get bored to death watching onions cook because I'm sure you know how that works out. I've got a big truck in there and that's okay. So I'll be back in just a few minutes and we're going to add some more ingredients. Okay, this is going to be a two burner meal now. So what I'm doing here is I've got the onions in here and I'm keeping them warm and then I'm putting the mushroom bouillon in here to kind of let it blend and work for a while and I guess uh, still got some bouillon in there I want to get out gotta use all that that's good stuff so let's get a Let's see, is that a spatula or a scraper? My daughter's going to be on me if I call it the wrong thing. I guess that's a scraper today, so we'll scrape it. Now, here's it going in there, and I'm just going to kind of let that simmer a while. So we've got onions, and then the next thing that we're going to do is to flavor that 
with the herbs that we have in here, including the celery salt, and I got the rosemary in there, and some thyme, and all that stuff. So I want that to kind of work together, and I'm going to simmer that a little bit. Well, that thing's kind of sticky. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to put the lid on there. So that, that kind of works together, and I've been warming this up. I've got some uh, coconut oil in there, and now it's time to put in the mushrooms. So we're going to put them in here, and those are going to take about 10 minutes. So rather than have you sit there and wait on mushrooms to cook or watch them cook for 10 minutes, I'm going to shut the camera down while I do that. What we want to do is extract the moisture out of those. That kind of helps flavor them up a little bit. So I'm going to put this lid on over here. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. And whoops. There we go. That's 10. So I'll uh, be back shortly. Now then we'll put in the rest of the liquid ingredients including the other vegetables and the cheese and this is going to be a scrumptious meal I'll tell you. So be right back shortly. Okay our 10 minutes are up. Now after five minutes was over I added the red peppers in there. I want to soften them up a little bit before we put them in the soup and uh, I've got all the mushrooms looking pretty good and we've got most of the flavor coaxed out of them and now we're going to put in one of our favorites is garlic and I'll press some garlic in here so that we don't burn it we're putting it in at the last and we're going to stir it around a little bit and uh, this give it a little garlicky kick. There, that was a good batch. So, I'm going to stir that now. Okay. I don't think anybody likes burned garlic. You know, it's interesting. We like roasted garlic. We just don't like burned garlic. So we're putting that in there. I put a little oil in. I'm going to give a skosh more oil here so that floats around in that and we'll get all the rest of the garlic in here. I can smell that. I guess I don't think I had any Italian in my family that I knew about but I love garlic and yet I find out how many other cultures are garlic eaters so then all of that I want to be sure knock all this off of here so that we don't waste any of it. I had four cloves in there and again you may not want that much you may want more. So I'm getting that to kind of flavor up our mushrooms. If you notice our still is getting kind of dark. We still got this over here brewing up a little bit. And I got a couple options that are going to come up in a minute or two as this garlic kind of seasons up. Yeah, that smells like garlic, I'll tell you that. So we'll get this little thing out of here and get the rest of it off. And uh, once I've done that, then we got a couple choices. Now, I know not everybody likes wine. I don't drink it, but I found out it's good flavoring. And of course, if you put it in there when the skillet's nice and hot, the alcohol is going to burn off. Now, if nobody wants alcohol in their house, I can understand that. But the other option would be to go over here and lay a little bit of this stuff in here. You notice we got that blending the flavors in there pretty good so it won't be long we're going to marry all those flavors and tastes together but let's say the first next thing i'm going to do is just put a little bit of wine in here 
I've always found that that seems to kick up the flavor of the mushrooms and of course it's going to deglaze our skillet and get some of the best flavoring out of there so there it goes so now we're getting all that good stuff off the bottom of the skillet and that's going to infuse with our mushrooms our garlic our red peppers and I'm going to let that heat up a little bit so that the alcohol floats off and then we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in there and get ready for a tremendous meal. I'm going to tell you, this is good stuff. I like it. You can see we're bubbling a little bit now. And uh, that's what we're supposed to do. So the next move is I'm going to go over here, get my trusty little scraper out and start scraping the good stuff in here. Get some more flavors married together in there. And they're going to start boiling a little bit and soften up those red peppers some more. Well, I tell you, that's good looking stuff. Now remember, that's mushroom bullion in there. You could use chicken if you prefer, but since this has got a lot of mushrooms in it, well, we had to put that in there too. So. We got that out of the way, and uh, we're going to stir this all up a little bit. You see, that's almost starting to thicken. Now, remember, we started with a roux, so that's going to help that soup thicken up a little bit. So now, it's time to put in the mushroom soup. And, uh, you know, they make cans different than they used to. Used to be you could poke a hole in the bottom of the can more easily than you can now and the air would push that stuff out but they made it hard on us by giving us a different bottom. I don't know who came up with that idea but it wasn't mine. Now we're going to clean all this mushroom soup out of here. So right now we've got some great mushroom soup and uh, not very many vegetables in. They're coming shortly. So I think I got all that out of there. So I want to stir that up just a little bit. You can see it's kind of working together. And I'm going to knock those lump out with my... I'm going to call that a stir now. I'm done scraping. I'm stirring. So we'll stir with a scraper. And then the next thing we're going to put in is the sour cream and uh, see how this works out. Yep, that's good old sour cream. So we'll put that in there now. And again, we want to kind of break that up and I'm going to simmer that in a minute or two, but we don't want to forget our vegetables in there. So that's going to come up shortly. And you see, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to taste that stuff in here in a minute. Uh, everybody, excuse me. I'm going to see if that's as good as it ought to be by now. You can almost have that without the vegetables in it. Yep. Mighty tasty. Mighty tasty. I'm proud of that. Now, next step, we'll find a pair of scissors back here. And we will put in the vegetables. Now again, we could use fresh, could have used fresh. We've got a big group now, it's just me. And my neighbor might get some. So, other than that, there's not too many people around here going to eat this stuff, but I'm going to tell you, I'm sure going to dig into it. And I want to stir it up a little bit more. Now, you're not going to have to watch this simmer, but I am going to let it simmer. But before I do that, I'm going to put just about half of this coconut milk. Now, you notice that is good coconut stuff. That's got the real coconut on top. In fact, I'm going to put that whole thing in there because that was one of the better coconuts that I've got. See, that's real coconut there. And... Uh, 
again you could use stuff comes out of a cow but I prefer this it's kind of unhandy now you see I got that thing just about all filled up and what I'm going to do is let it work on itself a little bit I'm going to shut that camera off I don't think there's much more you need to see it's all in there together and when I think it's ready I'm going to be over at the table so I'll see you over there a little later Well, I got so eager to eat and to get this ready I almost left out two important ingredients now one of the things I got to mention is you want to keep stirring this I don't think you want to get your creamy sauce bubbling too much or it may burn down in there the vegetables are softening up pretty well but what I did forget is the obligatory cayenne pepper here so I'm going to put about oh I put several shakes of that in there I like it hot and it's starting to bubble so I'm going to turn it back a little bit it's been cooking while you've been absent there and I want to get this all stirred in here nicely but the other thing we almost didn't get in there to thicken it up a little bit is the cheese and uh, as I was putting things away I saw that cheese sitting out of here and thought oops we got to let people see the cheese going in so there goes the cheese now that's about half a pack I'll probably put another few fingerfuls in there in a minute or two but we want to get that cheesy flavor incorporated with everything else of course we got uh, the sour cream in it too and it's adding to the flavors so I'm going to put just a little bit more and then I'm going to save that other four ounces for something else but there's the cheese now so what I'll do it uh, next step is I'll do what I said earlier I'll meet you over the table I'm going to turn this off just a minute now I got that cheese pretty well incorporated so let's shut her down and uh, I'm going to put the lid on and then I'm going to go over there and after this kind of I don't know if you call that steeping or not but we want it to infuse all the flavors and get the cheese creamy and we'll be seeing you over here at the lunch counter soon now as I said I'm getting ready to eat I said I'd meet you over here and I'm here now I hope you're ready to see what we're doing because I'm ready to taste this it's again it's past my lunch time here in Sarasota but I thought we'd better do it right and get everything in there I uh, think that I'm going to love this. I don't know about you. I wish you would try it and tell me how you like it in the comments. It's cooled down a little bit. Just enough to taste. It's about perfect. We've got some carrots in there. There's some of that good old red pepper. And it's softened up real well. And of course we got one of the main ingredients here is broccoli. I didn't cut up the florets much, but those are about bite size. And again, the cheese that I almost left out really gave it that extra flavor that we wanted. And that is good. So, I'm sure glad you showed up today. I hope that you'll subscribe if you haven't and share it with your friends and like it so that YouTube puts it out so more people see it. That's the main reason that we do this is to get viewers and with your help we'll get more viewers. So let your friends in on this. They may like it as well. And uh, tell me as I said in the comments what you think of it. Now as I told you, I don't get paid for this, but the neat thing is, I checked my phone a few minutes, I sold a couple art prints while I was doing the video, so that's okay. This is one of my 
recent paintings. Uh, I live near Siesta Key Beach down here in Sarasota, and there's a big group of thousands and thousands of people that are love Siesta Key Beach. So I paint a lot of beach scenes, and uh, they buy mainly the prints. I sell the prints as well as the originals. I just soon not sell the originals. I got some of them hanging on the wall in the other room. And the other thing that I just started doing, again, I used to do these when I did shows, and I sold a lot of these little minis. These are only three inches by three inches, but they're cute little things. These little friend, friend, uh, easels were available. They sit around on desks, tables, wherever you want to put them. And uh, we sell a lot of these. These are individuals, and one of the reasons is I did a painting with this little turtle a while back, and I had so many people that liked that turtle and they liked the print, but some of them, their kids, were big into turtles, so they wanted the turtle, so I decided to paint uh, uh, some of these. So we have these offered, and again, I don't know if YouTube would get excited. I see all these on Etsy.com under the name of Phil Darst Art. So if you want to see more of my artwork, you can go to Etsy.com, uh, look at Phil Darst Art Gallery. You'll see a lot of things. I'm selling these individually, but I'm getting ready to start packing them up in groups and, and uh, have some special offers on that because they make great gifts. They make great souvenirs. If you are somebody that comes to Florida once in a while and want a Florida souvenir, that's that. And then I've got some other paintings that I've done too. So that's basically one of the reasons I'm here. Now, it's been a joy to have you here. And again, I hope that you'll hit the bell so that you see what's next. I don't always know what I'm going to fix. I noticed I've been doing a number of Indian dishes uh, a while back and we've had some space between them. I see one of the things that I like to show off is uh, an Indian curry with uh, lentils in it. A lot of people uh, aren't used to lentils so much. They'll eat beans, but lentils are really good for you. So I eat a lot of lentils myself, and I'll be putting some of those in a recipe. I'll probably do a kish before long. I've got a special kish that I make that uh, is good for those that like it for breakfast, lunch, brunch, whatever and some other things. So by hitting that bell, you'll see what's coming up next. Uh, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for coming, giving me part of your day today. I've enjoyed sharing mine with you, so I'll say goodbye for now.